Welcome to Old Iron Machine Works. Um, in this video, I will be restoring a vintage Wilton power arm. This is an earlier model where the difference is you can see where they're uh, cast at Chicago 14 on the front. And on these particular models on the bottom, they have, you can see there, they just have the small little horseshoe brackets that are held on with the bolts, where the later ones they, uh, you know, they change the style on. It actually came from an older machinist that has passed away. Um, I made a trip to Southern California with a friend of mine, and while we were down there, we were able to stop off and kind of look and go through some of the stuff that this older mach machinist had and some of his friends were selling off his stuff and I actually picked up a few items that I thought were uh, you know were pretty cool and definitely worth restoring I guess I should mention um, I think I gave 20 bucks for this you know I know I got some time in it um, kind of a labor of love but at 20 bucks it was worth uh, going through The arm here was definitely uh, pretty stiff. Um, didn't really want to work uh, up and down too much. But super simple uh, concept. You know, when you work the lever, the bottom shaft just has a little cam, you know, cam load machine in it. And it just kind of pushes the plunger up and locks everything up. That's got a homemade handle there, which will just be uh, discarded. And I will make another handle for it. Somebody definitely got um, a little ambunctious with this thing. I got a little rough with it and beat on that lower shaft and kind of flared the end. The shaft's extremely hard. Um, I'm guessing in the Rockwell 60 um, class, but you can't touch it with a file. You can see here where I've been stoning it with the stone. The file just skips right over the top of it. And what you want to do is you definitely want to stone off the high spots before you drive it out. Otherwise, you're just going to mess up the housing. Here I'm making a little bit of results with the stone, getting it down. I don't want to take the grinder to it. So put a little patience into it. You know, I, being that it is very hard, I only want to remove the high spots. Right here looks real good. Right here you can still see I need to go a little bit more, you know, before I knock it out. All right, got the shaft kind of knocked out. It was still snug. And you can see there the shiny spots. Those are still the high spots. Those still need to be stoned down. You know, and they only run a couple uh, a couple thousands clearance inside the housing. You know, so you really don't want to take it on a grinder or something. You know, I, I like to just be patient and stone up only the high spots. And low spots don't mean anything. But they were definitely pretty rough with that lower shaft. The 
if you watch my channel much at all, you know I'm a huge fan of really nice quality blast cabinets. Here I have a solid stainless steel rod. It was actually for one of our uh, dump controls. It just has a, you know, originally, you know, it had a float on one end. And I'm going to convert it for a new handle. What it's got is 8 inch pipe on one end. And I got this old handle here, which is 3 8 fine thread. Basically, 3 8 fine thread and 8 inch pipe are real close. So here I'm just taking a uh, 3 8 fine thread tap and just running it right over the pipe and just re-threading it down. And that end will go into the handle. Here I'm going to clean up the castings a little bit. On this part here, it just had a whole bunch of little high, little just high spots that I just wanted to kind of sand down, smooth up a little bit. And then here you can see some rough casting marks. You know, I don't want to go crazy, but I do want to clean those up just a little bit. Here I'll be using a little 3 inch sanding disc. I'm pretty sure it's probably 80 grit somewhere around there. You know, to just kind of knock off just the high spots. And then um, I'll come over after top of that with the little 3 inch scotch right pad.
Here I think it cleaned up really nice, but yet still kind of kept the, you know, original casting flaws in it. Here I'll just go into the bores with the little flap disc, little polisher, and just kind of smooth it out, get rid of any high spots. In my opinion, there's no better prep than a nice uh, glass bead finish right before you uh, primer paint. Here I really like the uh, hammered paints, and this is the hammered gold, uh, but I didn't get quite the finish I wanted. Um, I don't know if the temperature was just too cold or not, but I thought, you know what, good enough. I'm not, I'm not going to redo it. Here I just put the ball right in some shim stock and then with the bearing I'm just kind of centering it up and I'm just moving the bearing in until the bearing just uh, can turn continuously and then I just came back with the uh, belt sander just to kind of put the parts on it. As I said earlier, the main bottom shaft is extremely hard and it should be a couple thousandths under three quarters of an inch or 750. And you can see right there, it's going over, you know, three, four thousandths from where somebody, you know, smacked or got rough on the end. And that's where I just stoned those areas off. The shaft also had a slight tweak to it. 
So I basically wanted to concentrate with the stone on getting the part that fit in the housing true without removing uh, excess metal where I didn't want to remove it. Here you can still see, I like the glass bead finish because then I can go over it with the stone and really see, you know, just where I'm removing material. Here with the stone, you just basically take it down. You can see exactly, you know, the area that you're stoning. And once you got a nice uh, smooth surface and you're down to flat material, stop. No reason going any more than that. Now I'm getting ready to do the, uh, you know, the outside portion of it. And it's just the very end that needs to be stoned. Here's a really good example where you can see the high spots and all the way on the outside edge. Right there you can see where I've stoned it to where it's nice and flat. That's kind of what you want to do all the way around it. Here I got it looking pretty good. You know, I got all the high spots off of it. Shaft still looks like crud. You know, so I still got to dress it. But the 3 8 hole was a pain in the rear. Uh, being the shaft was so hard, some of the best taps I had, they were just wanting to, you know, chip and crack and break off as I was trying to get it down through there. I almost thought I was going to have to heat it up, take the temper out of it, you know, to finally get a tap to go through it. There's another one of my nice taps, and there was no way I was going to run it through the hole. <laughs> it would just screw it up, too. But I had this old tap that's been kicking around forever. And I just kind of took my time, and I was able to finally get it to punch all the way through and clean it up. You know, without having to heat it up and take the temper out of it. When restoring something, I try to make the whole thing look nice when it's done. And to me, to leave that shaft looking the way it was, and the belt polisher just kind of, it kind of laughs at the belts. The belts don't do anything. So I went ahead and put the Do More uh, Tool Post Grinder in it. And um, the part that I'm grinding is just cosmetic. It sticks out of the, bo the main body uh, of the power arm, and then a hammer just screws in it. You know, so here I'm just making a few passes, you know, with the grinder just to clean it up. On this application, I wanted to get the stone actually running perfectly true, you know, with the lathe. So I got a little Mighty Mag, you know, with a little diamond, you know, dresser on it that I just clip right to the chuck and then just kind of dress the stone.
you could see here it's uh, I'm making headway but still got a still got a little ways to go I'm getting ready to grind the ends of the shafts also they uh, they weren't real pretty looking and I thought I'd dress them up also while, while I was at it Here's the brackets that hold everything together and you can see they were kind of a little on the rough side um, I think when they were new they just <laughs> I don't think they spent too much time on them you know so I just wanted to uh, clean them up a bit so I just took them over on the belt sander I don't have footage of it you know but just kind of you know ran them around a little bit on the belt sander to clean it up With most of my projects, just about any metal part that I can put into the the vibrator uh, with the ceramic, I will do. I really like the finish it gives me. Here everything's ready for assembly. Here you can see the cam set up. When you work the shaft, all it does is raise it up and lock to the ball. Well, one thing I did do on the final deal is I assembled it to where the handle is on the left. And then I left the handle a little long. I, I figured, you know, if I don't like it longer, I can always uh, cut it off and shorten it later. I want to say hats off to uh, all the YouTube creators that take the time to uh, put videos together. Uh, I know for a fact I spend more time just trying to edit and put a video together than I spend on the project itself. I'm not much of a computer person, so it's a big learning curve um, for me. And when I have a glitch, um, I end up fighting it. And I know I'm having some uh, audio problems. Hopefully, with the video, 
it'll straighten out we'll see um, but anyway hats off to all the creators out there I kept wanting to uh, edit more and more of this video uh, shorter and shorter, which I didn't. I know everybody likes different style videos, some less, some more. Uh, but anyway, I want to thank my new subscribers. Um, I want to thank anybody that took the time to check out the video. And um, thumbs up. And uh, new subscribers are always nice. Once again, I, I appreciate you checking it out.